Okay. But I, I want to, as I say here, uh, just first of all, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dankeschön, <laughs> for all you do for peace and justice. I really encourage you to keep working for peace and justice. Very important. Also, danke, danke, dreimal danke für alles, was ihr tut, an Arbeit für den Frieden. So, uh, and, and you know, for me, the spiritual life is the journey to peace, toward a new future of peace, making peace with everyone and all of creation and the God of peace. This is the point of life. Und der de spirituelle Lebensweg ist der Weg zum Frieden. Also, er hat sich doch nicht an seinem Manuskript jetzt. Um, und äh, Frieden eben mit, mit der Schöpfung der Menschen, das äh, mit Gott. Äh, wir müssen entschuldigen, ich ein bisschen buddle, weil ich jetzt gar nicht darauf vorbereite, war jetzt gleich zu übersetzen, aber wir kommen ja schon rein, okay? So maybe I'll just try briefly to say a few words about myself, about violence and war, non-violence and peace, Jesus and my little closing points, and then I won't go into detail like the speech. Okay, aber er greift aus seiner Rede eben auf, ein paar Dinge auch kurz über sich selbst, ähm, über, über Gewalt im Krieg, über, über Gewaltlosigkeit und am Ende einige Schlussbemerkungen. So, maybe we're yeah. I don't know. Yeah. so I'm 55 years old and I tell the story in here that uh, I've been working full time for peace in the United States since about 1980. And uh, how I got involved was uh, I was a wild college kid and one day decided I had to give my life to Jesus and become a priest. And my family was appalled and begged me not to. So I waited for a year and then I decided I'd save up my money and go hitchhiking through Israel for three months to see where Jesus lived. <laughs> Do you want to translate that? Well, it's all in here. It's all in there. Do you all understand? Right? You can read along if you know. And did, are you okay if I talk like this in English? So, the week I left, you remember in 1982, was the war, the Israeli war on Lebanon. And all the Holy Land tours were canceled. And I walked through Israel for three months, oblivious to the war. And I was having a very nice, pious pilgrimage when my goal was to go to see the Sea of Galilee. And I'm a 21-year-old kid, and I was camping out right by the water. And there was nobody for miles and miles. And I went up to the, the have you been to the, get the Sea of Galilee, Martin? And have you been? Yeah. yeah. And you know the North Shore is the Chapel of the Beatitudes? Right. And I didn't know anything about there. And I get into the Chapel of the Beatitudes. And it was a Wednesday afternoon, and there was nobody there. And there on the walls of the church are the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those persecuted for working for justice. And I was overwhelmed. I thought, oh my God. I think he's serious. Uh, and I just, I was shocked that uh, Jesus wants us to be peacemakers and to work for justice. I did not know that. And it was sort of like a second conversion for me. And I went out to the balcony overlooking the Sea of Galilee and I was talking to God, do you want me to work for peace and justice? And I said, okay, I will work for peace and justice and the Beatitudes if you give me a sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does that what's the word for a sign? Also er weitet so ein bisschen ab und ich würde darum bitten, wenn einer ein bisschen verloren geht, dann einfach die Hand heben, dann, dann springe ich kurz ein. Okay. Give me a sign. Give, God, yeah. give me a sign. Yeah. Yeah. And just at that moment, boom, 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 these three big black Israeli jets fell from the sky, swooping down over the Sea of Galilee, breaking the sound barrier, setting off sonic booms, and flew over my head and dropped bombs along the Sea of Galilee. 
Also da in dem Moment, wo er um das Zeichen bat, da kommen diese drei <lacht> israelischen Kampfbomber aus der Höhe, schießen runter, fliegen dicht über den, den See Gedesaret und dann nach Libanon rein und entladen der Bombenlast. And there and then I said I would spend the rest of my life working on the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. That's why I'm here tonight. Und deswegen ist er heute hier, weil da wurde ihm klar, die Seligpreisungen sind die Botschaft, die sein Leben. And it changed, changed my life to see warfare at the place where Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers and not your enemies. It's Selig sind die Friedfertigen und in dem Moment diese Bomber hören, die Schallmauer durchbrechen und das aber in dem Land, wo Jesus auf der Erde gelebt hat. So then I joined every peace and justice group in the country, Pax Christi, FOR, I met Daniel and Philip Berrigan, Dorothy Soleil was in the US in 1982. Zoller. Dorothy Soleil. Soleil? Soleil. Did you know her, Ralph? Oh, not in person, but she's a friend. I knew her in the States, but I knew me. And uh, I started organizing protests and getting arrested. And now I've been arrested about 75 or 80 times. And I've been in jail for about a year of my life in prison for protesting war. And, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I read it. Yeah, it's on uh, page two. And uh, went and lived in El Salvador, became the director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation went to Iraq and many war zones around the world I've been in. I was very involved in September 11th. I was the coordinator of all the chaplains, for 600 chaplains, ministering to all the family members. And I worked at Ground Zero. And I was organizing the main demonstrations against the bombing of Afghanistan. The church officials were so mad at me, they kicked me out of New York City after September 11th, after all that. And I moved to New Mexico, where I live now, in the desert. It's the poorest place in the United States, and all the nuclear weapons are built there. And we have a peace campaign at Los Alamos. Uh, and that's what I'm working on right now. So let me say, uh, is this okay to keep talking like this? Do you understand a little bit? <laughs> You're very smart. I <laughs> So I think of the world as a world of total violence. That's why I call it. 35 wars happening. Some say it's up to 85. One billion people are starving, according to the United Nations right now. It's incredible. There's 16 to 18,000 nuclear weapons still on the planet, ready to go. That's incredible. Catastrophic climate change, because we're hating the earth and stealing every the resources, leading to environmental destruction like we can't imagine. A world of total violence. And all this other types of violence that you're resisting, racism, sexism, Islamophobia, torture, executions in the United States, and so forth and so on. And all this violence is totally normal and legitimate, and legal. It's legal to blow up the planet. It's legal to destroy the planet with climate change. Allowing one billion people to, is to, to die of starvation is legal. And it's spiritual, this violence. In the United States, and maybe in your own history too, we have a spirituality of violence and war. That God is a God of war. Might makes right. No love your enemies, kill your enemies for steal their stuff. In the United States, when I go around and I talk about peace and justice and nonviolence in churches, and everybody's for war, all the Catholics and the Christians want to bomb Iraq. I start talking about Jesus. And everybody gets mad at me, and they're like, why do you talk about Jesus? Why do you bring him up? <laughs> so I just want to mention that as Pax Christi people. Mahatma Gandhi said, and I put the quote here, 
Jesus was the greatest person of nonviolence in the history of the world. It's an incredible sentence. Very important. And then Gandhi said, and the only people on the whole planet who don't know that Jesus is nonviolent are Christians. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Hat sie im Vorgespräch mit Mario noch unterhalten und dann hat sie geschildert, wie wenn er so in den USA äh, mit seiner Botschaft äh, auch in die Kirchengemeinden geht, äh, dass man mal wieder auch auf fromme Katholiken trifft, die sagen, aber wir müssen den Irak bombardieren und das sind für sie greifen uns an und so weiter. Und dann äh, holt er irgendwann äh, den Jesus raus. Ne? Und erzählt mir so über die Gewaltlosigkeit von Jesus. Und dann wird er kritisiert, ja, muss er aus, wenn Jesus jetzt kommen? Ne? Ähm, und ähm, ja, ich zitiere noch Mahatma Gandhi, der mal gesagt hat, also das erstmal in Gandhis Augen war Jesus der größte, ja auch praktizierende, gewaltlose Mensch und die Einzigen, die das nicht wirklich wissen, sind die Christen. Oder viele Christen. I, I soft a bit. Mm -hmm. Gandhis phrase. The, the only ones who don't know it are the Christians. I said many Christians. Okay. Um, so that's a big question for me, and I think very important for Pax Christi people to talk about. Like I don't, I was telling Mary, I don't talk about the church. Because that doesn't help us move, we're all mad and divided and fight. But you talk about Jesus. Is Gandhi right? Was Jesus violent or non-violent? I've been saying G Gandhi was totally right, and we're only beginning to understand that Jesus was the epitome of nonviolence. All his teachings, as I say there, are nonviolence. Love one another, turn the other cheek, love your enemies, blessed are the peacemakers, offer no violent resistance to one who does evil. And uh, it, the Sermon on the Mount is the greatest teachings Gandhi said of nonviolence in history. And then Jesus, to me, is building a campaign of nonviolence. He sends the 72 disciples ahead to Jerusalem. They go on a march to Jerusalem like Gandhi on the Salt March or Martin Luther King in Selma. And Jesus goes into the temple and turns over the tables of the bankers and does civil disobedience. But he's nonviolent. He does not hit anybody, hurt anybody, kill anybody, or drop any nuclear bombs. I just wanted to be clear about that. And uh, the myth of him being violent is all wrong. And I can I explain that in my books. And, and Gandhi says Jesus, of course they arrest him and kill him. But Gandhi says Jesus goes into perfect nonviolence as they kill him. And he's saying... The violence stops here in my body. You are all forgiven, but you are not allowed to kill anymore. And he's raised from the dead and says, Peace be with you. Now you go practice nonviolence and make peace in a world of total violence and war. Wow. That's very exciting. And, uh, and I invite you to think about all that. So I have these five little points, and then we can open up for questions, and I'll just mention them. On page 13. How do you say page 13? Seite 13. That's way too long. Seite is page 13 is 13. <laughs> First, we have to be students and teachers of gospel nonviolence. We have to really study this and then keep teaching everybody you know till the day you die, everybody in Germany, about the methodology of peace and nonviolence. Second, we have to be contemplatives and activists at the same time. So you have to be ex pursuing prayer. Really, really take time with God and discover God as a God of peace. If you're going to work in a culture of war uh, and vice versa as an activist, you have to make sure you're spending time in contemplation. But all of us have to be activists too. That's what I'm saying here. Third, we have to be prophets of peace and nonviolence. And even if you don't like that word, we can be a prophetic people. That's a better way of saying it. Do you see the difference? 
you want to say that translate also, uh, yeah, we must also be Marx and Kim or Gandhi werden, also Propheten werden. Aber wenn das Prophetenamt ein bisschen zu hoch ist, wir können einfach prophetische Menschen werden. Very important. All of us have to speak out in Germany, in the United States, from now on. And I don't, nobody likes to speak out. I don't like to give talks, to go around and speak. But we have to do it. This is what Gandhi did, and Dorothy Day, and Martin Luther King, and Archbishop Romero, to speak out and so forth, and say, in the name of God, end the wars, end poverty, end nuclear weapons, end in destroying the environment. Give us a reign of peace. Very, very important. And fourth, this is uh, what I was talking about today at the, the radio station. What has happened to us in Germany, in Europe, and the United States is that we have lost the imagination. And what you and I are trying to do is help everyone in Germany, everyone in the United States, to reclaim the imagination for peace. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, the, uh, I mean, in, if you ask people in New York City, Will there ever not be a war? They say you're crazy. We're all we, the U.S. is waging six wars right now tonight. We will always have war. They can't imagine a different world. And so what we talk about in the United States are the abolitionists, the people who worked to end slavery 200 years ago. Do you understand that word, the abolitionists? The discarnbefreiern, die vor zwei Jahren gekämpft haben. And these people came along 200 years ago and said, we are announcing the abolition of slavery. Everybody said, well, you're crazy. And they lost their jobs, their homes were burned down, they were threatened. They said, you can't, there's nothing you can do. There's always been slavery. It's in the Bible. Some people aren't people. They said, no. A new world is coming. A world without slavery, where everyone is equal. And they reclaimed the imagination of what it could be, mean to be human beings. We have to be like the abolitionists. They're our ancestors, these great people. And our job is harder. You're going to stand up in Germany, in Munich. This is what your job is to do, and what mine. And say, excuse me, Germany. We are announcing the abolition of war and poverty, and hunger, and racism, and sexism, and nuclear weapons, and environmental destruction, they're going to go, well, you're completely crazy. And you say, no, a new world is coming. A new world of nonviolence. Jesus called it the kingdom of God is at hand. This is what Martin Luther King did. He lifted up the imagination. I think this is very important to think about, to help where we clean vision, because we're all so blind right now. This is at the spirituality of our work. And I like to think about these things. Um, but finally, the last point there is that I, I, with you I've been thinking about this for so long. Why do we work for peace? The culture of war is always trying to tell you who you are. You're a good German. In the United States, you're a Republican or a Democrat. You're a liberal or conservative, or you're a housewife or a professor. In the United States, the TV commercials throughout the 1970s and 1980s said, be all you can be, join the Marines, and kill for the United States Army. Hmm. They understand that? Uh, so it's all about the fundamental thing is our identity. Who are we? Go ahead, you want to translate that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, also, it's about that wir unsere eigene Identität erstmal finden, dass wir uns als, als geliebte Söhne und Töchter Gottes begreifen. Das wird auch hier, aber er hat ein Beispiel erzählt, dass man immer wieder gesagt bekommt, du bist das, du bist das, ein guter dies, ein guter das. Und es gab eine Werbung in den USA, in den 70er Jahren, wurde dann dafür geworben, Du bist gut, du bist tapfer, join the Marines, also komm zu den, zu den Marines und kämpfe für Amerika, töte für Amerika. Das war also, als ob das der, 
das Versprechen eines erfüllten Lebens wäre. Very powerful. And my question was, and maybe you translate this, is how did Jesus practice perfect nonviolence? It's a silly question, but it's a question. And I figured it out. He was sitting by the River Jordan, he hears the voice, you are my beloved son. He's the only person who claimed his identity as the beloved son of God. And he's tempted in the desert, if you are the son of God, do this, do violence. And as he died on the cross, if you are the son of God, come down and do this. And he said, no, I'm going to be there. But then he says, blessed are the peacemakers. You're all the sons and daughters of God. So we go make peace because we know our identity is to be the son and daughter of God. Ja, er nimmt das Bild von Jesus am, am, am Jordan, weil, als er getaut wird und sich der Himmel auftut und er die Stimme hört, du bist mein geliebter Sohn. Und, und Jesus hat diese, Gewalt, äh, die, diese Gottes Sohnschaft, Gottes Tochterschaft, also Gottes Kindschaft, auch durch sein Leben trägt uns alle, alle äh, einlädt, Söhne und Töchter Gottes zu sein. Ähm, und das ist die, die gewaltige Botschaft eigentlich die hier drin steckt und dass die ihm sogar die Kraft gab, selbst am Kreuz noch zu vergeben, äh, dass er die Kraft hatte, die, die 40 Tage in der Wüste in die Versuchung zu widerstehen. Und das ist so der fünfte Punkt, den John uns eben bittet. Seid euch dessen bewusst, ihr seid alle, und zwar nicht nur wir hier, sondern alle Menschen sind Söhne und Töchter Gottes. Was auch halt nach Expanding with yourself, which also means with total equality, You know, as sons and, and daughters of God, we're all equal. That means we're all sisters. We're all brothers, brothers, brothers and sisters. Even the guy I don't like, yeah. the one who hates me, is still my brother yeah. and all my sisters. Yeah. Yeah. This is the spirituality of peace and nonviolence. And that's at the very end there I say, nonviolence means remembering who you are. You are the beloved son of the creator of the universe, the beloved daughter of God. And God is a God of peace. So you go and make peace. It's, it's beautiful. And the question really is, is your God a God of peace? Is God nonviolent? And Gandhi and Martin Luther King come along and say, yes, God is a God of peace. God is a God of nonviolence. And we, you and I are going to claim as being children of God and help spread that for the whole human race. My hope and prayer for you is that you will really be sons and daughters of the God of peace. That you will really follow the nonviolent Jesus. And that you will, Pax Christi Germany, will lift up a vision for everybody in your country of a nonviolent Germany. And a nonviolent Europe. And the coming of a new nonviolent world. Thanks for listening to me, everybody.